Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsey, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Are you ready for our annual trip to Canada? Yeah, let's uh, let's go north of the borders uh, today, Matt. Uh, of course, we're talking about a big uh, Champions Day of turf up at Woodbine uh, outside of Toronto, Ontario. We've got uh, four grade one races, Matt. Three are winning your in for the Breeders' Cup. The other one, I think, will also certainly spill forward into the Breeders' Cup. Uh, without further ado, let's go to the biggest one. It's the $1 million Woodbine Mile, Matt. Uh, whether we're talking about Masters, Master of the Seas or, or Modern Games or going back a little farther, of course, uh, uh, wise Dan, this has been a very key race as we are looking at the Breeders' Cup mile. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. This Woodbine mile is is really an epitome of uh, winning your in. Uh, uh, the the Woodbine mile horses have done uh, uh, really fantastic in the Breeders' Cup mile, which is typically one of the toughest races to win. Uh, at the World Championships with so many quality horses coming over from Europe. Yeah, well said, Matt. And, and we see that in the Woodbine Mile as well, quality horses coming over from Europe. In fact, it's a uh, it's a pretty good mix of uh, Canadians versus uh, uh, Europeans with uh, just a little bit of American thrown in. Let's uh, start from the rail out. Play me a tune, Matt. Johnny Velazquez is up there to ride a few horses uh, for trainer Mark Cassie. And this is a, a, actually for Cassie and other races. This one is a Josie Carroll. And this one is a very, very talented sprinter. I would love to see this son of McLean's music try the dirt running short. But uh, here he is stretching out to a mile for his first career turf race in this big, big race. Yeah, taking a shot, Josie, is to see where... Uh where this talented, lightly raced runner uh, fits in with only three starts uh, thus far. First two were wins on the uh, synthetic surface at, uh, uh, at Woodbine, and uh, most recently uh, was a, ran in his, in his first uh, stakes race, a grade three, just missed a win by a neck, so uh, really has done nothing wrong uh, in those first three starts, tries the turf for the first time in a very tough spot. Yeah, and let's let let me talk a little bit more about the sprint uh, sprinting he's done because this is a horse I've been following up there. He won his maiden by eleven lengths uh, earlier this year. He romped an allowance race, and in the last race, it really was a matchup of the best sprinters in Canada. Uh, he ran a very good second, considering all the uh, foundation he was giving away, all the experience he was giving away to the winner, who is the best printer in in the nation up there in Canada. So play me a tune. Uh, really could be any kind, but he's only run on Woodbine's poly track. He's only run at sprints. So tough spot. This does look like a race where there's some speed also, Matt. So uh, I think play me a tune will have uh, his work cut out for him in his first career turf race. Number two is a horse we're familiar with. Um, Naval Power, you see William Buick coming over to ride for Charlie Appleby. You see the the, 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 blue, the familiar blue silks, this English bred. Uh, he um, showed a lot of promise early in his career. He had 13 months off and he's come back very good. He was a, a, a nice winner over in Dubai early this year. And he's come over to America, North America, America for his first two starts. And they were both good, but he didn't get the win in either one. No, that's for sure, Brian. You know, we're talking about the Charlie Appleby horse in here. And Charlie Appleby has amazingly won the last two runnings of the, the uh, Woodbine Mile. And both of those talented runners went on to win the Breeders' Cup Mile. So uh, here's Charlie Appleby back again with another very strong, uh, very strong horse who uh, uh, came over from Europe uh, and and ran really well in those two second places uh, in the Grade One Turf Classic at Churchill Downs, and before that. Uh, was second in the Maker's Mile at Keeneland, just missing in there. 
um, and was obviously has run in Europe and ran in Maidan also. So, uh, you know, it, it's hard to overlook the uh, Appleby juggernaut uh, in the Woodbine Mile. Uh, taking a little time off, Naval Power is here after those two races. Uh, he has been part of that band of horses that Appleby had at Saratoga that has done so well in big turf races all over the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Naval Power was uh, up at Saratoga at the Green Tree Complex there working out regularly. Uh, the two races in Kentucky I thought were very good. Master of the Seas, I, I still maintain, is the best three-year-old or the best miler on turf uh, in the country when he's healthy. He was second to him at Keeneland, and then the Turf Classic just missed, going nine furlongs. Uh, another thing you have to like about Naval Power, who we expect to be favored here in the Woodbine Mile, is that he can pass horses. And as I said already, there looks to be some speed in here. Number three is Secret Reserve, Matt, uh, uh, an Ontario bred son of Giant Gizmo. Uh, last time he was a big long shot when he finished third in the King Edward uh, of the winner is also in this race, but he was uh, he was a long shot there. Gotta think he'll be a long shot here as he moves even higher up in class on Saturday. Yeah, can't argue with that, uh, with that statement, Brian. Uh, in this kind of field, somebody's gotta be a long shot. Yeah, Secret Reserve looks to be. The, the the next horse on the list, Matt, is uh, Big Rock. And Big Rock, you know, you can easily call him the best miler in Europe in 2023. Uh, big Rock was uh, big in France, uh, winning uh, several big races over there. Um, I think he likes wet turf, though. I think he likes soft or heavy turf, as he got in France so often. But this year, his races have been on firmer turf. And his races have not been very good. Still, I think he'll be a strong second choice in the Woodbine Mile. Yeah, absolutely. On that 2023 form, uh, which does include also a Group 1 win uh, at uh, the fall Ascot meeting, um, he he was quite formidable last year. And yeah, the, the, the three starts this year have just uh, not been up to that level, a fifth, a tenth, a sixth. All in Group 1 races, though, uh, for sure. Um, can we dismiss them as easily as saying they were all on firm turf? Um, I don't know if we can do it that easily. And um, I, I guess there's a chance that there's going to be a firm turf up there uh, on Saturday. Yeah, it sure looks. I was just going to say that, Matt. It sure looks like the turf will be firm because there's a lot of sunshine uh, in the forecast over the next several days up up there at Woodbine. So Big Rock probably will be getting a firm turf again. Uh, he, the son of the great rock at Gibraltar, Matt, had a, had a big year, as we said last year. But he ran nine times, five wins, three seconds, big performances, often on soft turf. I, I wonder if maybe that took a little bit of, out of him. And, and that's the other part of the equation, as you, as you wonder if he's... Uh, uh, going to be okay on firm turf at Woodbine on Saturday. Maybe he's just last year took something out of him and he's not quite the same horse. We'll see. We expect Big Rock to be the second choice in here. He's certainly got a ton of back class, that much we know. All right, Matt, number five. Uh, we've seen this uh, eight-year-old son of Drosselmeyer for years now. Philo D. Arlana, Matt, uh, Ariana, excuse me. Philo de Ariana is a uh, horse who has done very well north of the border for trainer Mark Cassie. Five for five on the Woodbine turf course. Yeah, and 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 can we possibly say, Brian, that uh, that Philo de Ariana is uh, in the best form of his career as an eight-year-old? I don't know, but he's got two really nice grade two wins in a row in that King Edward that we mentioned earlier against a couple horses that are in this field and in the Highlander at Woodbine. Um, races where uh, he was second recently in May at Churchill Downs, Brian, was behind the super talented speedy Cogburn. Yeah, 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 that was running shorter, and that's probably not his best game. He's right at home, you would think, at this one-mile distance, and he's certainly right at home on the Woodbine turf with that 5-for-5 five five record. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's better than ever, Matt, but uh, he certainly hasn't slowed down, 
as the son of the Breeders' Cup Classic winner at eight years old, a Brazilian bred, uh, started his career down in South America. Let's take a look at that pace because we've talked about it a little bit already. Speed, fast pace, you see. Uh, number five, there he is. He's out there as one of the projected early leaders with uh, the sprinter, Play Me a Tune, of course, close. Uh, my boy Prince, who we're going to talk about in a little bit, close. Uh, the Long Shot Secret Reserve, close. And 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 he, Big uh, Big Rock is not uh, showing up on this, but uh, he's another horse who's, who's got some early speed. So we do expect a fast pace, and, and for good or for bad, uh, that could uh, play a big part in this race. And maybe, again, I'm going back to the chalk here, but maybe that favors horses who want to rally, like number two, Naval Power, number six, win for the money. Matt, win for the money is uh, the other Cassie, if you will. He's uh, He's got uh, a, a couple in here, uh, three, I should say, in here. And um, win for the money has been running in America's last few, the son of uh, Mohamed. Actually, he won a stakes race uh, pretty impressively earlier this year at Gulfstream Park before uh, coming to Canada for his last, or uh, coming to Kentucky for his last two, where he was fourth in the wide stand before running second last uh, last time at Ellis Park. Yeah, and, you know, I, I he is probably the other, other, Cassie in here will probably be the longest shot of the of the three Cassies in here. But, you know, I don't know there. Uh, this horse is uh, is, is not so bad. I, I, he's the kind that might be a live long shot. Yeah, I, I can see that. Matt. win for the money is a, is a horse who likes a mile. He's he's coming in with pretty good form. Um, of course, Cassie does well when he brings up to, horses to Canada all the time. Uh, I, I don't know if I like him necessarily to pull off an upset in here, but he's certainly a horse you could use uh, to uh, uh, get up into a piece, whether it's the exacta, trifecta, superfecta. And as we saw from the pace projector, he's a horse who can be a little farther off the early lead, which probably is a good thing with this expected pace. Number seven is certainly a long shot in here, Matt. Uh, number seven is Niagara Skyline. I, I like the name, but I don't know if I like the son of war dancer against this bunch uh, experience over the turf course at Woodbine. In fact, he's run 13 times up there with five wins. Uh, good form recently, uh, running just a little bit shorter, uh, third, second, and first in his last three. Yeah, a nice, solid allowance horse, Brian, who is up against it. Okay, I, I guess that's enough said for him. Both him and uh, Secret Reserve seem to be uh, a notch or two. Uh, below the best in, in here. Number eight's a real wild card in the field, though. Um, my boy Prince, we have him at about six to one on our line uh, as we wait to see the uh, Woodbine morning line. But my boy Prince has been a classy horse, whether he's sprinting or running middle distance, or as we saw last time, running 10 furlongs. Maybe that uh, solid pace in the Kings Plate got to him late when, when the Philly, Caitlin, or Greatness uh, went by him in the last uh, 100 yards or so of the King's Plate. But another good performance by my boy Prince. He does it on synthetic. He does it on turf. And if you look back to his last one-mile turf race, it was the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year where he ran very well out in Santa Anita. Yeah, uh, that's for sure, Brian. You know, uh, second in the King's Plate. And before that, he had won three races in a row. Uh, like you said, getting back onto the turf uh, where uh, he ran well, not only in the Breeders' Cup, but also as a two-year-old, he finished second in the in the grade one summer stakes at Woodbine also. So uh, 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 certainly has a lot of credentials. This, uh, uh, this three-year-old will be facing older horses for the first time. Um, been running a good bit recently. Um, as you said, I think uh, wild card uh, is a good description because uh, he could win, but maybe he could run out of the money also. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this does remind me a little bit what we used to see in America, Matt, where we'd have horses build up to the Kentucky Derby, run in the Kentucky Derby, and then run in the Met Mile, uh, drop back because they knew that their distance uh, – uh, the distance of, of a mile was better than those classic distances. And, and I think we saw that last time with my boy Prince. 
albeit running a very good second in the Kings play. Uh, this is the time of year where three-year-olds can really start to contend with their older uh, uh, rivals, and we'll talk about that more certainly in the EP Taylor. But my boy Prince is, has got enough class, and I think he probably prefers a distance like a mile over a mile and a quarter. So I certainly can't throw him out here as uh, as the three-year-old in this field in the Woodbine Mile, but uh, not going to be my top pick, let's say, but uh, certainly a dangerous horse in here. Matt, we're, we're not going to jump into the two-year-old races. The uh, Let's mention them real quick because the Natama and the Summer for for Phillies and, and Colts, respectively, Drew, just big, big fields, uh, 13, 14 horses in those races. Those are also winning your in for their respective Breeders' Cup turf races for the juveniles. So certainly uh, big things on this card, but we wanted to talk about some of the biggest stars that are running at Woodbine are, are the Phillies and Mares that'll be running in the EP Taylor. And uh, I, I know you're a big fan of Moira. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a big fan of several of these uh, uh, Phillies and Mares in uh, EP Taylor. It, it's one of those fields that we've talked about. It's on the small side, but it's, it's a pretty select field. Yeah, it, it, it is on the small side, six, but this is a, uh, an example of an excellent six horse field because I think the horses that you see that are going to be let go with some odds in here, probably the one blush and the four full count Felicia, they're both really nice uh, uh, fillies and mares. They're they're nice turf horses. I guess we can still count full count Felicia as a filly. So let's call both of them fillies because blush is a three-year-old. Blush is a three-year-old daughter of Kingman on Irish bread. She's been running in France. And uh, I mentioned it for Big Rock, and, and I think it's a worry a little bit for me with Blush as well. But Blush has been doing very well on soft turf. She's won three in a row. She's improving, but she's been doing it on soft turf. So you got to wonder, will Blush prefer this firmer turf she'll see on Saturday? Yeah, I guess you'll certainly have to do that. But, you know, you have to wonder about uh, sending uh, uh, sending a horse over to North America where most of the time – we we have firm turf courses, um, but so they have to think that, that there are some uh, positives about that. Uh, three year old uh, and uh, has won three races in a row is a Group Three winner uh, over in Europe. Also, yeah, that was her last race over in France. She was a Group Three winner nicely. Uh, the distance makes sense. Um, she uh, she fits in um with 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 these horses i think um much like my boy prince on a on a class perspective but uh tough spot coming over but a live long shot i should also mention when we're talking about blush matt that the three horses from europe uh blush blue rose sen and even cinderella's dream who's now had a couple races already in america will all be running with first time lasik so that's a, another thing to Think about as you uh, handicap this race. All right, the number two, uh, I expect to be the favorite, despite the class of this field. She's the Canadian champion. She's Moira. Yeah, Moira, uh, 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 what a nice uh, nice horse that, that she is from the barn of Kevin Attard. I think he's got a couple of them in this field last time out. Uh, she traveled down to Colonial Downs to win the Beverly D., which is a, a, a grade two, one of those races that was transferred over from uh, Ireland Park when it closed. Before that was uh, uh, second in one of the signature turf races at Saratoga for the Phillies and Mares, the Diana, a second place finish in that, uh, in that race. The kind of fields that that uh, race attracts is certainly no knock. And uh, if we want to go back a little bit more uh, to last year, was third in the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mayor Turf, and was third in this EP Taylor. Yeah, Moira, Moira's been good for forever. Moira, let's, let's say it from the very beginning of her career, Moira has just been a top-notch Canadian Philly, the daughter of Go Sapper, as you mentioned, trained by Kevin Attard. Um, King's Plate winner, uh, Canadian Horse of the Year two years ago. She was very good last year. I think she lost some on, on softer turf, maybe that she wouldn't have if it was firm turf. She's actually been second. She was second in this race as a three-year-old and third in this race 
uh, last year, as you mentioned. So she's been knocking on the door of an EP, EP Taylor win, uh, the biggest turf race for Phillies and mares in Canada uh, the last couple of years. Yeah, her form, whether you talk about how she finished out last year with that good third in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, or there's two races this year, uh, she she looks like she's coming into this absolutely in stellar form. That second in Diana where White Beam was on the lead the whole way on a pretty slow pace was really good. And then last time she just wore down Fed Fev Rover in an excellent edition of the Beverly D. So Moira, the the, the horse to beat. Uh, you mentioned the other Kevin Atard, which is we're going to skip to the four horse mat because full count Alicia's Felicia is a nice horse, but I, I do wonder if uh, full count Felicia Kevin Atard might be using her just a little bit to uh, to kind of make sure that there's some pace in here. Uh, full count Felicia has some speed. Moira likes to come from a little far back, farther back. And, and I think the entry mate of Moira could help uh, Moira's chances on Saturday. Yeah, that could be. But, you know, I don't think we should completely just say that uh, uh, full count Felicia is in there as a uh, pace setter. It seems clear that, that she will be on the lead in her most recent ra race in the grade two Canadian. She got out to the lead. She got loose on the lead, and any time a horse can get loose on the lead, like full count Felicia did in there, they are tough to catch. However, this E.P. Taylor is a whole different kind of field than that Canadian. Yeah, and, and there are other horses in here who who can uh, be uh, pretty close to the pace. Fev Rover is one of them. Uh, we don't have, of course, this is kind of, Time form U.S. pace projectors a little short for this field because they don't uh, have the horses who have only run in Europe there. But uh, both Blue Rose Sen and uh, and Blush are able to stay uh, within striking distance. So uh, Moira would probably be a little farther off the pace uh, on Saturday, which I think is not a bad thing for the favorite, uh, the Canadian Moira. Let's get back to the number three, Matt, because Fev Rover certainly wanted to talk about too. She's actually the defending champion of this race. And if we're talking about Moira as the favorite and the horse to, horse to beat in the EP Taylor, Fev Rover can't be too far behind because she beat her in the EP Taylor last year. These, these two have knocked heads quite a bit, quite a rivalry actually developing between the two. And Fev Rover, of course, was narrowly, narrowly beaten last time at Colonial in that uh, Beverly D. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a very... Uh another very nice quality horse this is uh, uh, uh this one is from the barn of mark cassie as you mentioned second in that beverly d second in uh nassau another uh grade two at at woodbine and in uh 2023 uh ran awfully well in the breeders cup philly and mare turf yeah, uh, certainly Moira was better, but uh, Fev Rover was uh, not beaten by all that much in the Philly Mare Turf. I, I do think she's another one. She can run on, on turf that's firm, but I do think she's another one. She's an Irish bred who's even tougher on wet turf. So the fact that we're not going to have wet turf makes me think that it, it's advantage Moira in that rivalry of theirs. Uh, Blue Rose Sen, Matt, let's talk about Blue Rose Sen because I don't think there was a better three-year-old Philly in Europe last year than Blue Rose Sen. Uh, Blue Rose Sen won a Group 1 impressively as a two-year-old in France. She won three of the biggest female races last year in France, all Group 1s. And, um, you know, she was celebrated as the best three-year-old filly over there last year. The daughter of Churchill, though, much like Big Rock, just has been a little bit disappointing this year. She's 0 for 4 after such a big year last year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if her coming over, they're bringing them, they're bringing her over and uh, uh, the same connections uh, as uh, big rock. Um, she used to be trained by Christopher head, by the way, uh, Christopher head had her for all those group one successes. Guarneri has her now and you got to wonder if there's something there, but uh, on the other hand, maybe her form is starting to round into uh into contention here as she comes over to Woodbine. Yeah, I certainly agree. And the, and the similarity uh, that you brought up about uh, Big Rock from the same barn uh, certainly uh, didn't escape my eyes either. Uh, 
on her form from last year. Uh, she is uh, got to be a serious win contender. But on her more recent form, you have to say, well, she's going to have to get back to it uh, if she's going to uh, be have a shot to win against the likes of uh, horses that we've already mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I will mention that we, we said she's 0 for 4 this year. I will mention that the first two were Group 1 races against some of the best males in Europe. And, and then the last two were back against females. On the last one, she was beaten less than length in the Group 1 race over there. So I, I think that form might be just a little deceiving in, in the competition she's run against, but also the fact that she is improving this year and could be ready to strike her best here. Number six is another horse we got to talk a lot about, Matt. Uh, uh, the second three-year-old in the field, along with uh, Blush, Cinderella's Dream, William Buick, Charlie Appleby. Uh, since coming over from Europe, she's been very good. Yeah, well, uh, she was very good uh, uh, in Europe, also, Brian. This is a this is a filly that has run seven times, won six of them. We have to also point out. As a two-year-old, she beat the boys a couple of times. Here we are. You know, it's Charlie Appleby. It's William Buick. Uh, uh, a horse like this is going to get a ton of action. All of those wins are going to be attractive to betters. And, and another one that has been part of that Appleby band that's been training at Saratoga. Two wins in America already. Won the Belmont Oaks a grade one, won the Saratoga Oaks, a grade two, uh, um, impressive record. I think I have to say that uh, those, those two wins in the, uh, in the Oaks in, at, on the Naira tracks probably were not against the toughest fields. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you a little bit, Matt. I, I of course, I handicapped and watched those races and I, I thought those were decent three-year-old Philly fields, but not standouts. She's running against better horses for the first time in North America uh, here against older, but also classier mares in the EP Taylor. Also, she was four for four at one point in Europe. Still, she was 12 to one in, one, in the 1,000 guineas uh, earlier this year, 12 to one. So they didn't respect her a ton. She ran seventh in her one big race over in Europe. So I wouldn't quite put her in the class of horses like Blue Rose Sen or Big Rock, uh, for example, or even Naval Power uh, over on the other side of the pond. But you see that all the time with Appleby horses where they're kind of second level in Europe and then they come over here and, and they're monsters. And maybe she will be a monster, but this will be uh, a new level of competition for Cinderella's dream as she's leaving those three-year-old races where I agree with you, Matt, it was just a little bit lighter than she will see in the EP Taylor. All right, folks, hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do so for us. We appreciate it. Leave us a comment. Turn on those notifications. It helps Matt and I out. We hope you enjoy these shows every week. Right now, it's time for top picks in the Woodbine Mile. E.P. Taylor, you're first, Matt. Um, well, I guess we'll start with the Woodbine, Woodbine Mile because we uh, did that first in our rundown. Um, I, I, I'm, I've got to go with the uh, Appleby machine, the Appleby Woodbine Mile machine in here. Um, and I'm going to pick Naval Power. Yeah, I, I as always, I, I look to try to beat the favorites and um, I couldn't do it because, because of the pace. I, I, I think it's I think it sets up very well for Naval Power. Uh, he's freshened a little bit off those really good Kentucky second place finishes. I don't think this is quite as strong a field as the EP Taylor. I think Naval Power is is a likely winner. Big Rock, um, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get from Big Rock. I worry about the firmer turf. I worry that he just hasn't looked very good this year. Uh, I can't throw out Philo Fieriana at all. Uh, he's probably the horse I like second best. I can't throw out my boy Prince. But um, for me, Naval Power, I, I couldn't pick anybody but him as my top pick. How about D.P. Taylor, Matt? E.P. Taylor, um, as I was saying uh, during the uh, our analysis of that race, uh, um, we have Moira at two to one on our uh, morning line on, on the, in at Horse Center. Um, I think there are horses that have impressive resumes that are going to take money. I mentioned uh, uh, Cinderella's Cinderella's Dream. 
Fev Rover, Blue Rose Sin, uh, 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 Full Count Felicia, Blush. Um, so I am hoping that uh, a horse of the quality of Moira might actually get that two to one odds. And uh, that's not too short for me to make Moira the top pick. Yeah, uh, I think she's the most likely favorite, but I, I could certainly see the three-year-old filly. Cinderella Stream has the favorite, and, and certainly Blue Rose San Fev Rover can't be far behind. So there will be some decent odds here with the six. Um, I, I am looking for Blue Rose San to, to regain her really fantastic form that we saw uh, earlier in her career. I think the four-year-old is not done. The daughter of Churchill, I think, will show her class. And that's saying a lot against... Moira and Fev Rover and Cinderella's Dream. But I think Blue Roan Sen is that good. And third choice, fourth choice, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on her here in the EP Taylor. As a fan, I wouldn't mind to see Moira, of course, win the EP Taylor for the first time after finishing second or third the last uh, two years. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Certainly, Brian. I mean, it, it's always great to uh, to – enjoy these important turf races on this day at Woodbine because these races do produce so many horses uh, uh, that end up in the Breeders' Cup and not just the two that we're, we're featuring. There are usually are two or three race, uh, horses from each of those two-year-old races that you mentioned that end up in the Breeders' Cup. So important races to watch uh, uh, just for the fun of this weekend and then down the road. Yeah, absolutely. The Breeders' Cup, four Breeders' Cup turf races, at the minimum four, will be affected by what we see. So watch watch these four group ones on the turf at Woodbine, one of the nicest turf courses in, in the world, uh, closely on Saturday. Let's uh, thank uh, the viewers for watching, Matt, each and every week. We sure do appreciate it. We also want to thank our uh, friend in the Louisville office, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there for sponsorship. And, of course, Timeform US for their pace projections we like to use here. Hey, Matt, we got a big weekend uh, at, in Pennsylvania. Ben, ben Salem near Philadelphia next week. Uh, Parks, Cotillion, Penn Derby, uh, next running, the Gallant Bob, the Sprinters. I, I'm even more excited about the, that at Parks next week than I am about Woodbine this week. That's for sure. Don't forget Torpedo Anna, Brian. I, I never forget the torpedo anima. On that note, uh, we'll see you all next week right here on Horse Center. As always, uh, we wish you the best of luck with your watching and wagering. We'll see you right here next week on Horse Center for another show. See you.